Hello, I'm Darren Lyle, and in this video, we're going to go through the process of modeling this little teapot, using Blender's modeling tools to go through the process of creating each piece. And when we're done with the modeling, we will add a few materials, add a little bit of lighting, and actually render out an image of our teapot. So if you're new to 3D modeling in Blender and want to pick up a few tips and tricks along the way, then join me and follow along as we create this little teapot. First of all, I think what I'm going to do is create a new window. I'm going to come over here and hover over a corner until it turns into a cross and just change this to an image editor. And then I can click image and open and browse to that teapot here. There it is. And now we have it here in a window as a reference image. Now you can press control and spacebar and open it up in all one window here and then control and spacebar and go back. But it's just good to have it here in the window as we're working. I'm going to hit the A key and hit delete. And then the way I like to tell people about 3D modeling a man-made object is to think about how it was created in the factory. Like it was probably created by first manufacturing, say, this black part and separately the silver part here and the handle and the lid and the spout, etc. And then it was all put together once all those pieces were created. It wasn't created all in one piece. So don't try and create it all in one piece here in Blender. So let's go to the Add menu with Shift A, Mesh, and let's go to Cylinder. And here in the Cylinder settings, let's change our cap fill from Ingon to Triangle Fan. You can also choose nothing and have no cap fills, but I'm gonna choose Triangle Fan because that allows the top to be triangles here instead of just one face with numerous edges here. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna to go to the front view with the one key on the numpad. You can also go to the three key to go to the side view, the seven key to go to the top view. And if you don't have a number pad on your keyboard, you can always hit the tilde key, which is just below the escape key. And that has the same front and left and right menu items here. So I'm gonna to go to the front view here with the one key. And let's turn on the move manipulator here and just bring this up, put it there on the grid, kind of so it's sitting there on that red line and that's now sitting on the 3D grid. So now I'm gonna tab into edit mode and these faces up here, I can hit the three key to go to face mode, press Alt A to deselect everything. And I can of course go through and select each and every one of these holding the shift key down or I can hit the C key for the circle select tool and just click and drag and select all of them. And then right click to get out of that tool. Now once again, I'll go turn on the move tool and let's go to that front view again and just click and drag and drag this down to about where we think that black part ends. And I'm not gonna worry right now about this piece in here. We're gonna use the bevel tool to create that, but I just wanna get this black part right. Let's say right about here. So now what we can do is work on this silver part. And to do that, I've seen quite a few people just kind of begin extruding up out of here. So this is all one piece and having it all be connected to each other. But once again, that isn't how it was created in the factory. So what let's do for now is let's just take this face here and duplicate it. Press Shift D and then Enter. And now we've got this separate piece here. We can put it just above that scale it in with the S key just a little bit, and now we can begin using this to create the silver part. I think I want it to be a separate object, so I'm gonna press the P key and separate this by selection. So now, if I then tab back into object mode, it is a separate object. It's a complete other object now. You can see that over here. So now if we add edge loops or extra geometry or whatever, it won't accidentally come down and influence this part on the bottom. So I'm gonna hit the three key. Actually, I can just hit the A key to select all of that. Let's go to the front view again with the one key and I'll just hit E and I'm gonna pull straight up. Say maybe right about here, right? So maybe that's about as tall as it is here. Maybe I'll bring it up a little bit more and then I'm gonna scale it in with the S key until it's about the size that I think it should be up here on top. 
Now it's got a bit of a curve to it, so we can do that with Control R. We can insert an edge loop here with Control R and click two times, and then I'm going to hit the S key and kind of scale out just a little bit like this. Till we get kind of a curve there. Then we can do that again. We can press Control R, click twice, and then hit the S key and scale out here. Same down here, and like this. So it's just kind of a quick and easy way to get a bit of a curve there. All right, now that we've done that, let's go back and grab that little edge here or that little indentation here. These are actually two pieces, but I'm just going to go ahead and have it be one. Using the bevel tool here, I'm going to press Control R and click and bring this edge down to where I think the center of that ridge should be. And then let's use the bevel tool. Let's press Control E and here's bevel edges. But also up here, there's the edge menu, which is all we're doing when we press Control E. You can see bevel edges is here. And keep in mind, Control V is the vertex menu, and Control F is the face menu. So you can get to all of these menus here with shortcut keys. So I'll press Control E. However, there's yet another shortcut key here, Control B. So let's press Control B, and just click and drag out like this until we think it's about the right width. Maybe I'll hold the shift key down to move it out just a little bit slower. Maybe something like that. Maybe I'll bring that up just a little bit more like that. And now we can extrude this in. So there's a couple of ways to do this. We could hit the E key and then click. And then the problem is, is if we just hit the S key and try and scale this in, it's going to scale in the Z. So let me show you what I mean. You see how it's pulling together in the Z? the farther in we go, right? Now, it very well could be that if we just did it a little bit, no one would ever notice, and that's fine. But what I actually want to do is turn off that Z axis and only scale in the X and the Y. So let's just press the S key and then press Shift Z. And now, when we scale in, we do not scale in the Z at all. So I'm going to bring that in quite a bit there like that. There we go. All right, so we've got those two basic pieces there. Once again, what I think I'll do is use this to duplicate off a piece for the lid. And I think to do that, I'm going to hit the three key, C key, circle select, click and drag these, and then right click to get out of the tool. And I think what I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to hit the I key to inset this. So I'll hit I inset this just a little bit, which is really the same as extrude and scale. And then it's got this little edge on it. I'm just going to hit the E key and pull down in the Z axis like this. All right, so now I'm going to use this selected area and duplicate it off for the lid. Shift D, I'll hit the Z key, and that'll allow me to pull it up only in the Z axis. So there we go. Now, let's press P again to separate the selection. Now we have a new object, so if we tab into object mode, we can select that. Once again, you can see that over here in the outliner. Now I'd like to move this down, but I don't have the manipulator here. It's, it's down here where the origin of that object is because it's duplicated the origin from that original piece here. So I need to move the origin to the center of this geometry. And all you have to do is right click and choose set origin and origin to geometry. And there it is. All right, so now let's bring this down here. I'm going to put it right in here, and then I'm going to extrude it up. So I'm going to hit the Tab key and then hit A, and I'm just going to hit E and pull up, right about like this. Then I'm going to hit that I key again to inset and try and get this little ring here. So let's hit I, inset into here like this. But it also looks like it's kind of curving up a bit, so I want to kind of get that. So I'm going to Take this and bring it up just a hair like this. And then I'm going to hit the I key and bring it in. Pull it up just a smidge. I, bring it in, and pull that up just a smidge as well. So we've got just a little bit of a curve there. Now, I'm going to put a subdivision surface modifier on this. So getting it exact isn't really required at this point in time. I'm going to hit the 2 key, go to Edge Mode, and press Alt and click an edge to get that whole edge loop. Alt, click. There we go. So let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, I think we've got just a little bit 
of a curve there. I can also maybe just select this one point, hit the one key, select that, and bring it up just a bit. Now let's deal with this little guy right here. I'm going to hit the one key. And if this is my side view, or my, or my front view, I should say, I think I want the handle coming out here. So I think these pieces should go, yeah, so this should go like this, this way, I think. So what I want to do is take some points here and slide them toward the center to get this little piece right here. So let's just take these three points, and I'm going to hit G two times to slide them along the existing geometry. G two times and then they slide along that existing geometry there. And then maybe I'll take this and do that again, G two times and slide that like that. So we just get that basic shape there. I'll hit the two key so we can see it. And then I think I wanna take this edge, alt click that edge, and I wanna bevel it so we get just a little bit of an edge in there, right? A little bit of an indentation. So let's do that. Let's press control B, pull out just a little bit. I'll hold the shift key there. Pull out just a bit like that, and there we go. Now I'm gonna hit the three key to choose all the faces in there, and then let's just extrude down with the Z axis. I'll hit EZ and pull straight down just a smidge like that. All right, we'll see once we add a subdivision surface modifier how well we did there, but for now, let's keep going. I mean, we could go ahead and smooth this so I can select a part and right click and choose Shade Smooth and down here as well, Shade Smooth. We're getting some strange artifacts in here. So what we can do is come down here to the Properties panel, choose Object Data Properties here, and way down here under Normals, we can turn on Auto Smooth. So I'll select one, turn on Auto Smooth, select another one, turn on Auto Smooth. Now you can also do that by just right-clicking and going straight to Shade Auto Smooth, so we can try that. Yeah, okay. So we've got those basic pieces now. What about the handle? Well, if we hit the one key, we'll come over here and we can work on the handle. I feel like now that I'm looking at it from this side, this is too thick here, this edge here, this indentation. I mean, I can take these faces here, let's say, um, let's say these on, on top, alt click between two of the faces and it'll select in face mode that entire face loop. And now I can click and drag and pull that down a bit. Hit the one key and let's take a look at it. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. All right, so the handle. How should we do that? Well, once again, it is an object that is conforming to another object. And kind of like these pieces, I think we should duplicate off of this main piece here to get the beginnings of that handle. So what we can do is, first of all, how wide do we think it is? Is it wider than this? Yeah, I think so. Maybe let's go, let's select these here, like this, and let's duplicate this, Shift D, Enter. Let's pull it off in the X axis a bit, and then let's hit P and separate this by selection. All right, now we can select that, as its own piece, and we can begin to use this to create the handle. Now, if you want to, you can begin labeling these objects here. I'll call this handle. We could call this lid. We could call this the base. And we could call this main. We could just call that the main part. So it's helpful to stay organized as you get more and more pieces in your scene here. All right, for this now, Let's just take uh, this whole thing, I'll hit the A key, and let's just extrude this out. I'll hit E and let's just pull out in the X. What I'm gonna do is hit the X axis. You can see it's gonna try and bring it out perpendicular to the selected faces, so I can hit the X key and pull it out just in the X axis, so maybe like this. We could maybe scale that in just a bit like this, but not so much in the Z, so once again, I'll press S, Shift, Z to turn off that Z axis. And maybe we could scale this in a bit like that. And then we need to extrude these pieces out here. So I think what I'll do is extrude them out together and then try and have them meet up in the middle. So let's hit the two key to go to edge mode and alt click this edge here. And then I'll hit the G key two times 
and slide that up. And let's do that here too, the G key two times and slide that down. Something like that, there we go. And now we can take these faces here and these faces here, and let's hit that one key again, and let's extrude these out. Now I'm not exactly sure, we're looking at this at an angle, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly what the curves are, but let's try and get as close as we can. I'll hit E, X, and let's pull straight out because I think the top is going pretty straight. So maybe I'll go out to about here where the, maybe the top should be like that. And then I could select these here and pull these back some, maybe down into here. And those look like they can angle up like this. And this looks like we could maybe straighten this out. So maybe let's take this and maybe turn it, hit the R key and just turn it a bit. Or you could also shear it. So there's a shear tool here. Because if you turn it, it will stay the same width or stay the same height, I should say. And it might make this a little bit wider as we turn it. But if we shear it, we can click here. And then we can shear it by clicking one of these and turn it like this. And then that Z axis width will still stay the same. There we go. Now we can come over and click on the move tool to get out of that shear tool, and there we go. All right, so now what I wanna do is basically take this and turn it and bring it up here. So I'm gonna take these here. I think I will scale them in a bit, S, Y, like this. I think I will scale them in the Z, S, Z, so it's a little bit thinner like this. And then let's just hit the R key and turn it some, bring it up a bit. And now we're gonna extrude it up toward here. Now I can hit E and click and drag, but you can also press Control and right click. So if I press Control and right click, it will extrude that to that point. And then I can hit the R key, Control and R, and move that a bit like this. And there we go. Now I wanna create an edge here that this can connect to. So I'll hit the one key, Control R, drop an edge, say right in here. And now we can take these faces and these faces and connect them up. Now, I don't want this to be curved. I think I want to flatten this in the x-axis so I can press S, X, and zero and flatten that up. And then let's just take these faces here and let's take these faces here and we can bridge those edge loops. We can press Control E and bridge edge loops. And there we go. Now, there's some issues here. We've still got this curved, but I think what we're gonna do first is add a subdivision surface modifier and see how it looks. So I'll tab back into object mode. Let's come over here to the modifiers panel and let's come up to add modifier and we'll choose subdivision surface. Now you can see how it's beginning to kind of curve itself. Let's turn this up to two. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better, right? So now we can begin working with this to get it more in line with what we want from the reference image. So maybe I'll tab into edit mode and I can sharpen up these edges by pressing Control R, adding an edge loop and maybe pulling this in some like this. We can also add an edge loop down here to kind of tighten up the angle along here. So I'll press Control R and we can kind of tighten that up. We can do the same thing up here. Control R, tighten this up here. I feel like we could tighten this up over here just a bit as well. Maybe I'll add one here to see how that works. Yeah, kind of like this. All right, let's take a look at it. Yeah, we're getting there. I think there's more that we can do in terms of scaling it in the width. I feel like if we took this and maybe scaled it in the Y some, I could make it a little bit narrower. But then up here, I feel like I need to make it wider. Like we could alt click this edge and press SY and scale that out a bit, right? So maybe I'll grab this whole piece along here. These edges here, and let's scale these out in the Y, SY, and pull that out some. Now let's tab back into object mode. And I think that's doing all right. I think I would like to get rid of the faces on the interior of this. And to be able to see those, we could hide these. There's a couple ways to do this. 
We could hide everything that isn't selected with Shift H, and now we can see these faces on the inside. Let's turn on the cage here so we can see these a little bit better, and then I'll just take these and select all of these and get rid of these. Delete and delete faces. Now that opens up a little bit more, and I think we'll fit onto that a little bit better. Let's see. To unhide everything, we just press Alt H. So Shift H to hide the unselected, Alt H to bring everything back, and the H key just to hide the selected object. Alt H. There we go. All right. So now we've got a piece that's a little bit better, is conforming a little bit better to the piece. Let's right click and set the origin to the geometry here. And maybe I'll pull that in just a bit like this. There we go. There's more we can do here. We can go through and select edges and pull them out a bit, right? Like I could take these and pull them out like this. Hit the one key, pull points out a bit like this. So there's more that you can do to go through and kind of clean this up. But generally speaking, that shape is pretty much there. So now we can also work on this little piece right here, the spout. And to do that, one trick I like is to actually create the thing in two dimensions and then add thickness or three dimensions. So in other words, I think what I'd like to do with this is maybe begin with a cylinder. And then once I get the shape correct, then I'll add thickness to it instead of trying to do all of it in three dimensions. So here, let's press Shift A, Mesh Cylinder. I don't need a triangle fan on the top and the bottom. I'll just choose nothing. And then let's bring this up. And what I want to do is get this in shape so it looks a little bit more like a spout. And one way to do this is just to scale it. I'll press SY, kind of scale that in like that. We could now bring this bottom up here. I'm going to press Alt A to deselect and then Alt click this edge here. And let's bring this up. And maybe we could move it back like this. So I'm I'm looking at this here. And so maybe we could scale it a little bit more in the Y. And now let's try and just put it in here and see how it looks. I'll tab back into object mode, hit G, kind of move it into here. You can see I'm just trying to get a basic shape, right? So we could maybe take just this top row, S, Y, and scale it out like that. We could take the bottom row and maybe move it up. Maybe move it in a bit, like that. Now from here, we can just delete everything we don't need. So I'll hit the one key to go to the front view. And then to see through this, there are two ways you can do it. You can turn on X-ray mode with Alt-Z, right? And then Alt-Z to come out of that. Or you can go to wireframe with Shift-Z. And there you go. So I'll hit the three key and maybe click and drag. and. I'll maybe delete all of this here. Delete and delete faces. And there we go. So now, Alt-Z, we've got this piece here. Now we can, of course, smooth it. And we can add some thickness now if we wanted. So I will come over here, add modifier, solidify to add thickness. We can choose even thickness. And then we can click and drag in the thickness field. And I'll hold that shift key. We can move it. I'll move it in a bit like this, just so it's just maybe 0 0.018 or something like that. All right, I'll select it. And let's go over to our object data properties. Click on auto smooth. And that helps it look quite a bit better there. All right, well, let's do a little cleanup now. So. What let's do is let's add a subdivision surface modifier to the parts we think we need it. So I think I want to try adding one to this piece up here to kind of smooth it a little bit more. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to the lid here. I'll take it up to two. And let's tab into edit mode and turn on the cage and see what we can do here. So there are a couple of things we can do. We can add edges, right? We can press Control-R and add an edge to kind of 
tighten up that outside edge, but you can see how over here it isn't conforming to the edge. If we hit the E key while we're here inserting this edge loop, you can see in the upper left hand corner there's edge slide, and you can see it says even and off. If I hit E, it says it's turned on. Now I can flip this with the F key, and now it conforms to that outside edge. So maybe I'll do this like that. And then on the insides, we could try something a little bit different. We could Alt-click this edge and Alt-click this edge, and then right-click and choose Edge Crease. You can also press Shift-E, but if we choose Edge Crease here, we can then drag the mouse, and you can see how I'm pulling those edges together. It's creasing those, so it's kind of, so it's kind of tightening that edge up. So I'll bring those together just a smidge like that, and click, and now we have a smooth lid with a little bit of a curve and a nice edge around here too. All right, now for this piece, we could also add a subdivision surface modifier to this. What I'm gonna do is press Shift H to hide everything. And then I'm gonna remove these faces down here because if I add a subdivision surface modifier to this currently, look at what we get that collapses there. We don't need to do that. We can select these edges again with the circle select tool like this, and we can delete them, delete and delete faces, and now that pops out again, holding that shape. Once again, we could do that to these as well. I'll turn on the cage, and I'm just gonna select these faces here, and let's just see how this looks. If we delete these faces here, that's not bad. We're gonna to need to extrude that in a bit, but that's not too bad there, right? You've got a little edge right in here. So let's try that. To bring everything back once again, I'll press Alt-H, and let's take a look at it. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. We may need to bring in, as I said, this edge right in here. Looks like I still have that selected. I could press Shift-Z to make sure. Yep, so from here, I could just maybe extrude in. I could hit E and S, extrude and scale in a bit. Just to close that off, we could scale this up some. We could hit the S key and scale that up some. Now this already has a subdivision surface modifier on it, so I don't think I'm gonna do too much with this. I might take these and move them in a bit, right? And then for this down here, do we need a subdivision surface modifier for this? There are some kind of curved edges down here, so we could certainly try it. We could click Add Modifier Subdivision Surface, and now we've got um, quite a few issues here. <laughs> but what we can do is I turned on the cage, and once again, we can press Shift-H and come in and delete these faces here. Delete faces, and that opens that up. Delete faces down here if we want and that can open this up. However, if we ever want to turn this over, we're going to need a bottom down there, but currently we can just go ahead and do that. And then if I turn the cage off, you can see there are no edges here to hold these, so I can press Control R and drag an edge up and drag an edge down like this. We can put an edge inside here if we want. Control R and bring this out like that. Control R bring that out like that. And we could even put two in here. Control R, scroll the mouse wheel until we get maybe two edges. You could even put three if you want in there and click two times. There we go. Now I'll press Alt H and we need to close this off again. So I'll select this edge, hit E and S, and then E and S again. Kind of close that off a bit. We could turn this up to two. There we go. That's Kind of nice. Now it looks to me like this part is just not quite big enough, right? It looks like it's too narrow. And this too. So what let's do is once again scale without that Z axis. I'll press S, Shift Z, and now I can make it all a little bit wider like that. Then I can take this and bring this out. Take this, bring this out a bit. And of course, also take this and make this just a little bit bigger, like that. Now lastly, we could slap a few materials on this and call it done. 
Well, let's do that. Let's uh, scroll down over here to the materials panel. Let's select a piece, click new. I'll call this main since this is the main part. Let's give it kind of a silver color here. Let's go over to our material preview here like this. Let's now take this and add it to the other parts. Let's take this and we can pull the menu down here and choose main if we want to do that. Let's come up here and once again we can pull it down here or we can choose this one and then shift click another object that has the material we want and press control L and link materials and that will add it to that. Then we can take this new, we can call this uh, say black plastic. I think that's what that is and take this down to a more black color like this. And then once again, select this, shift click this, control L and link materials. Now we also have some black up here. So let's just select this, go to face mode, alt click, say between these two faces and press control and plus on the numpad to move that forward. Let's say to about right here, I hit the minus key to go back. Now, in addition to the main material, let's also add the black plastic. So I'll click here for the plus to add a new material slot. We could click new, but what we really want is to pull this down and to choose that black plastic here. Now what we have to do is assign that to those faces. Click assign, and there we go. All right, so now we've got the basic materials, but they don't look too great. Let's go over to our shading tab here. And in this view, we can kind of get a better sense of what it might look like under lighting conditions. So I'll take this right here, and we have that material here, or we can come back over here. And I will bring the specular all the way down, bring the metallic all the way up, and there we have more of a, a metallic material. Let's click in the roughness and bring that down quite a bit like this. And now for the plastic, let's select that. Now we're here in the black plastic. I think I'd like to make it a little bit darker. So let's click here and bring that down just a little bit. And since this is a plastic, we don't want the metallic on. Maybe I'll bring the specular down just a bit. So it's, no, let's take the specular up a little bit more. So it's a little bit shinier like that. There we go. Now we've got our teapot looking a little bit better. And lastly, what we can do is come over here to the layout tab. We could switch over to the rendered view. And in here, let's put an HDR image so we get some reflections on this. Over here, you can go to your world properties here, click on the color and go to environment texture. Now you get this awful pink, which just tells you something is missing. And in here, let's click open. And I've got some HDR images on my hard drive here. I will use one of these. Let's just use a um, kitchen scene here. I'll just click here and then open image. And now we've got our teapot with reflections here from the HDR image. I don't really want to see those, the image in the background. So I can come over to the render properties, come down to film and click transparent. And there we go. So now we've got our teapot. I can come back to the world and change the strength maybe to two so it's a little bit brighter. And now if we create a camera, shift A, camera, I'll then take this camera and move it back a bit, move it up some. Let's press zero on the numpad to look through it. And then what we can do is hit the N key, come over here to view, go to camera to view. And now when we move, we move the camera as our view. So I'll take this and move it maybe like this. I'll turn this off now. So when we click and drag, there's our camera and there's our object. I'll hit the N key. And now let's see how it looks. Let's just hit F12. And there it is. Make it just a little bit smaller here. There we go. I think that's a little bit too much of a long lens. I think what I'm gonna do is select the camera, come over here to camera, 
and change the focal length to maybe 35. Let's try that. I'll hit the zero key, hit the N key, camera to view, and I'll zoom in just a bit. There we go. Turn that off, hit the N key, tumble around, and let's hit F12 again. And there we go. Now, if you want to save this out, you can click on Image, Save As, put it on your hard drive. I'll call this Render Teapot. And there we go. Now we have that image right here. And there it is. There's our finished teapot. So if you're interested in going even further, check out my UV mapping video here on YouTube that'll show you how to UV map an object so that you can then put 2D textures on it as well. Well, thanks for watching and take care.